my name is Sonia, and this is my story. When I was 11 years old, um, I was in a home where one parent was using drugs and alcohol, and the other parent wasn't. Um, my father worked a lot, and my mom stayed at home um, with myself and my brothers. When I was this is when, when I was in middle school, and I had noticed her behavior. Um, it was really, really difficult because she was just absent a lot. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, with my younger brothers, and um, I felt a lot of hopelessness. Um, if there's one word to describe what I felt was hopelessness, and it really turned me um, it turned on me to make me think of myself as a victim and I didn't feel like I had any power. I felt really like I just, I was just powerless. During that time, it really, really, it was really, really traumatic um, because her behavior caused her to say a lot of things that really led me to fall into a place in my life where my heart was so hardened that um, I was really good at faking the happy moments and really good at faking the laughter, um, but I couldn't really be honest with myself. I couldn't get to a place in my heart of forgiveness or of even really being able to identify those sad parts in my heart. When I was 17 and I had recently started coming here to New Life, we had these awakening meetings, which were amazing. It was just almost about three weeks, full three weeks straight. Every night there was worship and prayer. And I remember one night I just started laughing and it was just uncontrollable laughter. I had this incredible Holy Ghost encounter. And when I'm saying like, just laughing, like I was crying and it wasn't like a laughter of like, oh, ha ha, something's funny. It's like, no, at this point, the Lord is doing something in my heart and he is healing me right now. And I couldn't explain it in the moment, but the Lord had so heavenly burdened me to forgive my mom. And it was in that moment in my heart um, that I forgave her um, for all of the moments, all of the times um, where I was on the receiving end of the re these really, really hurtful things. It was kind of like if you look at um, like a vase and then like a little crack starts and then just like soon that little crack becomes a bigger crack and just completely shatters. That was what it was like for all of the hopelessness, all of the depression, all the sadness, it completely shattered off. And after that encounter, after that night, I was never the same. I was laughing for probably three hours straight. It was actually a huge victory for me to be able to identify that because that was the defining moment of the Lord has healed this place in my heart where I can feel safe, where I can feel comfortable enough to do this. And, and so as the tears were flowing, it was like, this is a victory. You know, when I think about the message of hope is alive and it's just that knowing that knowledge of that he is constantly pursuing us. He's, he's constantly pursuing you. And, and even in those moments where you feel so hopeless and that you know you feel, might feel like you can't go on, that he's there and that he's present and, and he's so real and, and he's so much better, um, so much, so much better than you think. Hope is alive in my life today um, because of what Jesus did on the cross. And what Jesus did on the cross was not just for my own salvation, um, but it represents so much more. And it represents forgiveness. And, and if there's unforgiveness that you have towards someone over your life, that, that what he has paid for is so much greater, that just as you were worthy of forgiveness, so is someone else. And the power of the cross, it means also emotional healing. It means um, restoration. Um, of your body, of your soul, and your heart even. Uh, that is why hope is alive. What God has done for me, He can do for you.